But now let's talk about the Ghana Registered Nurses and Midwifery Association. Now you remember sometime in April that the president, uh, during one of his addresses, mentioned that all health workers in the country were going to get a tax rebate. And aside that, all frontline health workers as well were going to get a 50% uh, increase in salary for three months. That was between April, May, and June. And then just when it was almost ending, the president again announced that they had extended the tax rebates for all health workers till September. And all frontline health workers would also be enjoying some 50% increase in salary uh, between now and September. When this announcement was made the first time, the Ghana um, Nurses and Midwifery Association also spoke against it because they wanted the 50% salary increase to affect all health workers because according to them, they all yeah. may come in contact with COVID-19 patients one way or the other. Months down the line, we've seen some open letters addressed to government asking um, you know, for them to also halt the compilation of the voters register and there have been some threats uh, from the association to lay down their tools if a lot of these things are not done and so now we're crossing over to the general secretary of the ghana nurses and midwifery association he is mr david chum tinkran good morning good morning how, how are you doing i'm doing good what about you i'm fine thank you so about the frontline health workers and the conversation um, concerning the 50% increase in salary and how, you know, the association wanted this to affect all health workers. Did you arrive at any conclusion with government at all? We have not as of yet. Uh, okay, let me, good, uh, good, good morning to you and good morning to your viewers. Good morning. Uh, we have not as of yet come to any amicable conclusion as far as that is concerned. And um, as you rightly said, we indicated that based on the way we work, you know, based on the tenants of our work, you cannot say that this person is a frontliner and the another person is a backliner. Yeah. And the statistics, as we have it now, defeat that argument flatly because majority of the people that are infected right now are those that government do not consider them as frontliners. Mm. So it means that our argument is, 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 is paramount. Okay. But if you're saying that the statistics does not support it, how many of your members have... Been affected by COVID-19. Thank you. 350 nurses and midwives have been affected, have been infected, and unfortunately, we've had one death. Okay. Um, out of this number, I can tell you that less than 10 um, occurred at the designated treatment centers, especially those that government consider them as frontliners. So, okay. a sizable chunk of them, 300 and 40 plus mm -hmm. among those that have been infected are not considered as frontliners if we are to go strictly by government's definition which we disagree anyway okay but if that's the case what indication does this send because again i'm sure that it's going to affect the ability to work um you know and support the health sector because if a number of you are being affected it reduces your number Oh, that is true. Um, uh, there is no doubt about it. I mean, once people are supposed to step aside, it sort of puts considerable stress on the rest on the walls, all right? Because majority of those on the walls are those that are stepping aside. And it's not only those that are being infected. Okay? Mm. Once you get exposed, according to the protocols, you are expected to um, step aside, uh, mm -hmm. to embark on self-quarantine or self-isolation. Um, which we have issues with it. Maybe as we progress, uh, I'll bring that to bear. But, but what is the guarantee that all these people who may have been infected by COVID-19 got it whilst on the job? Um, yes, that's a brilliant question. But of course, the hospitals are in communities and we have community spread. L a bigger concentration of the disease, if you like. Now, most hospitals are becoming epicenters. If mm. I can cite one hospital to you, in the cold, uh, west, uh, uh, almost 100 people have been infected. And out of that 100, a chunk of them are necessary midwives. Mm. All right? Mm -hmm. So it tells you that our members. OK, and that's Mr. David Chum uh, Tinkran. OK. Uh, in the that. course of duty. And, and that cannot be debated, uh, can, cannot be debated because, uh, of course, they live in communities, they live in homes. We don't have any evidence that their families are infected as of now. Mm -hmm. So it tells you that they picked it from the hospital. That is the only clear 
uh, indication that comes to mind. And we, 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 we think, that at least we have had a conversation with them. We, we've contacted almost every nurse, every midwife that mm -hmm. has affected. We have the statistics, we have their names, we have the facilities in which they work. And yeah. it is traceable to uh, the, the hospitals that, that they work. What could be causing the increased infection? Is it due to lack of PPEs? Is it negligence? What exactly is it? Um, combination of factors. Lack of PPE is, of course, the most prominent uh, out of it. Why? Because not just PPE, but appropriate PPE. Mm -hmm. Okay, remember, I, we had a conversation and I indicated that WHO do not recommend the use of cloth mask at the clinical setting. Yeah. So what nurses and midwives are forced to use cloth mask at the clinical setting, then it's such a reason that it can fall, it, it can easily, uh, 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 they can easily is, be Is that what is of happening? Course. Is that what is happening? Is that, is that, that is what is happening. And are right these now. cloth masks part of the ones being provided by government? Some of the hospitals themselves, uh, managers have provided them some of the cloth masks. We are saying it's unacceptable whether it's provided by government or not. Yeah, not but what I want to find out is I know that government, hold on, I know that government has indicated that they were going to make some 3.6 million masks available. What I want to find out is did government ever give any health worker cloth mask, even though they are aware that that is not appropriate? My checks indicate that they started in Confanoche, but we, reje we, re we rejected it. Hmm. But what I'm telling you is that because the or, or correct or the appropriate PPEs are not available in their quantities, in their yeah. required quantities, the nurses are forced to use the cloth mask. All right. Most mm -hmm. of it sewn by the facilities themselves, based on the recommendations that was given by Food and Drugs Board, which we disagree, Food and Drug Authority, which we disagree. Why cloth do you disagree with it? Cloth mask can be used on the streets. Uh -huh. We are saying that the, why is it that? When it comes to discharge of patients, when it comes to protocol with respect to the management of patients, I want to go by WHO recommendations. But when it comes to providing appropriate PPs for nurses and midwives to work with, to protect all, not only themselves, but the clients that come to, their, to, to, to them or seek or solicit for their uh, services, we, we, we don't want to go by WHO recommendations, we want to mm. go by the drugs authorities' recommendations. What I'm saying is that there are ample evidence that shows that cloth mask is not appropriate. Okay. The level of porosity cannot be determined. You see, the point is that some of these masks that we use are disposable. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now there is a new study by almost 260 uh, something scientists that are pointing to the effect that, I mean, the, the, the way and manner we are even handling this uh, whole COVID-19 needs to be re-looked uh, re at with yeah. respect to I mean, the use of N91. The only appropriate mask that ought to be used by nurses and midwives, and for that matter, health workers, is N95, mm. all right? Especially those that are taking care of COVID patients. But you see, one thing that people must re recognize is that people end up on ordinary wars with ordinary conditions, as like gastroenteritis, with, I mean, new injuries, with mm -hmm. back aches. And within two days, they turn out positive to COVID-19. Yeah. All right. So if the nurses over there are not using the appropriate uh, uh, recommended PPEs, PPEs yeah. they will get infected. And that is one of the reasons why these things are happening. The second thing mm -hmm. is that we are recording symptomatic patients. Some of them text positive COVID to COVID. And once that numbers are increasing, they will require, uh, if you like, um, hospital management in-house hospital management or inpatient management, then mm -hmm. obviously, uh, if we are not using the required PPEs, the cases will certainly go up. Absolutely. All right. Again, when nurses get exposed, when nurses and midwives get exposed by maybe a known COVID-19 patient, instead of asking them to self-isolate or instead of the hospital providing facilities for them to isolate, mm -hmm. they will tell them to continue to work until they test positive. Okay. And we have ample evidence to this. And by the time they do, they, 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 their results will come. I know that we don't have uh, a quick, you know, all time results. Come yeah. Up, all right. And once the results will take days to, or even sometimes weeks to come, then obviously the nurses are likely to infect themselves and infect even other patients. But why do right. they ask so these to... nurses to stay on? Is it because of the lack of numbers?
lack of, you know, is the, that is what health managers want to tell us. But there are several nurses out there that have not been employed. That we have cadre of nurses that have completed their program of study. They passed their licensure exams. 2018, already 19 nurses and midwives are out there. They have not been given financial clearance. They can be brought on to augment the, 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 the fee so that the appropriate protocols can be respected. All right. I see no reason why any hospital authority should say that nurses and midwives should stay on till they are, they are, they are test, their results test positive. Mm -hmm. And I have given evidence that some hospitals are recalling nurses and midwives that have tested positive, stayed away for 14 days without a second negative, a, a, a first negative test. You know, previously the protocol was that you test positive, uh -huh. you self isolate, or you treat for 14 days, then they test you twice. Exactly. But they have revised that. That has changed. They have revised that. Yeah. It has been revised. I don't have a problem with the revision because, I mean, WHO, it, it follows the recommendations of WHO. Mm -hmm. Now, the current protocol is that you test positive, you, well, if you get exposed, you have to self isolate. When you test positive, you treat for 14 days, then you test again. And when you test negative, then you come back to work, which makes sense to me. But if the person tests positive, stays away for 14 days, mm -hmm. and without any tests being carried out, he or she is around, asked to come back to work, then we, we don't know what they are doing. So is, yeah. are, these so some are, of the, are these some of the reasons why you're threatening to lay down your tools? We are not threatening to lay down our So what tools. is it? Because we've seen pockets of threats. Uh, yes, I mean, when we, we keep telling government that we need to do the right thing, we need to, we always tell the health facilities, the health, the, 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 if you like, the managers of our various health facilities that they need to go strictly by the protocol when it comes to health workers. Okay, when it comes to health workers, they want to use something different, but when it comes to any other person, then they, they want to go by it. So we are simply asking them to do the right thing. Mm. Right, and of course, we can't sit down and see to the demise of our patients and uh, our, our people. That's exactly what I said some time ago, and people misconstrued my, my statement. All right, okay. that we said we are not going to put our lives, you know, we said that we are not going to nurse patients at the peril of our lives, and 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 that, and that it should not be debated. You okay. get a point because in, in doing we the right want thing, to, sorry. In doing the right thing, does that also include asking the EC to halt the compilation of the voters register? Well, Paul, um, we, we, we asking EC, initially, yes, that was a position that um, if looking at the spikes of the infection and, 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 and the lack of the appropriate protocols, um, that even health institutions are not able to go strictly by it. What is the propensity that EC and other such organizations will be able to uh, go strictly by it. And the registration centers point to that argument. But, well, if they think that they can put in the appropriate measures mm -hmm. and that will curtail further infection or further spikes of the infection, as we are seeing now, yeah. then uh, we, 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 we can't stop them. But I, I think that we need to, you know, all come together as Ghanaians and look at science if we are told that our decisions are based on data and science. What is happening right now? Several people are getting infected. There are spikes mm -hmm. at various places of work and, and, and centers and the rest of it. So we must sit down, wear a cool head, and as a country, take such appropriate decisions that will enable to the benefit of our citizens. Okay. I think that is the way to go. As a health worker, do you think, or uh, how effective do you think the EC's introduction of the Q system is, where they are only permitting just 150 people uh, per polling center at a point to reduce the numbers? Do you think it's effective? If Ghanaians will go strictly by that arrangement, I, I believe that uh, it, it can help okay. mitigate the, the dangers. Don't hmm. forget that see, this is a, a, a novel virus. And everybody is doing trying error, even including China. And sometimes it has worked for them. All right. Yesterday, I was on an international webinar where the presidential advisor on health well, happens to be there. And we had a conversation with the Chinese authorities as to how uh, they were able to, you know, uh, use appropriate modeling to uh, ward off the infection. And mm -hmm. we are picking bits and pieces from them so that we can implement uh, over here. But, okay. well, it's not all that bad in all centers. I registered in Kufuridia, where I live. And, I mean, it, it was such a fantastic 
uh, scene to, 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 to behold. Because, mm. I mean, there were no rush. No, people were well-spaced. People were more, more or less relaxed to get a thing done. So it's up to EC to assure the people that even okay. if they don't get registered, they will be given the opportunity to register. Once the, the fear of people are allayed, that whatever comes or whatever happens, they'll be given the opportunity to register. There wouldn't be the need for them to go and okay. queue and, and create confusion and infect themselves. Mr. Tinkran, so moving on, I mean, this would be my final question for you. At this point, what is that one thing that you want governments to do? Is it about the EC register <coughs> population? Is it about frontline health workers and the proper definition of who deserves the 50% increase? What is that one thing? All right, one thing that we want government and the health authorities to do is to provide the appropriate PPs in the right quantities. Okay. Another thing that we expect government to do is to redefine that frontline definition. We think that it is not fit for purpose, it is discriminatory, and we think that we need to have a second look at it. Okay. I believe that there's going to be an amalgamation of health workers. There's going to be a joint press conference today. Um, where, um, Ghana Resident Nurses and Midwest Association, GMA, uh, Health Service Workers Union, and GOSPA are going to have a joint press conference today. And I don't want to, you know. Okay, what, what time is that yeah. press conference? I think that's about 10 a.m. Uh, okay. Uh, not 10 a.m. Your, your station uh, will carry it, definitely. Yes, okay. Exactly. So, I mean, details of that, because I'm not the sp spokesperson for uh, uh, that amalgamation of health, health workers, uh, 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 if you like, unions. So I'll not be able to speak much about it. But okay. obviously, uh, most of the things that we have discussed are going to be spoken about. And I okay. believe that government will, will get a signal because okay. if all health unions have come together under one umbrella to speak in a certain manner, then they ought to listen to us because right. we are the people helping to fight the infection. And look, let me tell you, Ghanaians shouldn't you know, exercise any fear. What we need to do is to go by the preventive protocols that we have put in place. Mm. Government must intensify the education campaign okay. and citizens must be responsible enough and go by the necessary motivation to protect themselves and protect their families because and, and, and i hope you also know that the onus lies on the health workers as well to also um educate citizens so i hope that you're doing your part as health we're workers. doing our best we're okay doing our best. all right thank you midwives. you know we form the bulk of uh, healthcare providers in this country. We call it, we call ourselves resident healthcare workers, but mm -hmm. we stay by the patient. No wonder majority of our members are infected because we have a prolonged exposure to uh, 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 either known exactly. or unknown uh, uh, COVID-19 okay. cases. That's why government must look at necessary midwives in terms of no remuneration Thank and you. all that. Thank you, Mr. Thank Tinkran. You, and we'll be waiting um, to hear some more from the Joint Press Conference. Mr. David Chum Tinkran is the General Secretary for the Ghana uh, Nurses and Midwives Association, Ghana Registered Nurses and Midwives Association. Now, we have recorded 854 new cases. And so now our case count currently stands at 22,822 uh, with 17,564 recoveries. And active cases, 5,100. 129. This is TV3 New Day. We'll be coming.